Mr. Lau, made a fairly impassioned speech, but uh, I have to say the entire speech seems to be based on a misunderstanding of what the bill is all about, because everything you said is factually untrue, and I'll explain why. You raised the specter, ordinary citizens sitting in coffee shop, talking, will be charged with contempt. Does one honestly believe that? How does ordinary citizens sitting in a coffee shop having a beer and talking about a case pose a real risk of prejudicing any proceedings? Does anyone believe that? If the law today, the law yesterday is the same as the law tomorrow, have you seen anyone being charged for sitting in a coffee shop and talking about cases? You know, I think we want a debate that engages honestly on the facts. I'll tell you when someone sitting in a coffee shop discussing a case could be contempt. If you catch hold of a witness, have a beer with him, and try and influence him or threaten him in a coffee shop, that will be contempt. But if you sit with your friends and talk to them about a case, how do you think it impacts on any case? Give me an answer, somebody. Let's get real. Mr. Lau also said, government can say whatever it likes. And the courts can't do anything. Completely untrue. Under our system of law, the courts are the final arbiters of any provision of the law. The government has got to act in accordance with the law. Mr. Cobb, Ms. Quick, Associate Professor Mardevan, others ask me. I confirm that. What Justice Chur Singh said, if a minister stands up and speaks about a particular case in a manner calculated to prejudice the proceedings, and if he does it in bad faith, then I think he will be committing contempt. And the Attorney General, will be entitled to commence proceedings. Again, in real terms, what that subclause provides is no different from what is happening today and what has been happening all along. Let me give you examples. I told you about bank runs. I told you about uh, hospital incidents. The last hospital incident there was an inquiry. The government came out and made statements. At that time, it was entirely possible, in fact, coroner's inquiries are going to take place. But nevertheless, the government came out and made statements. Did anyone here think that that was wrong? Does anyone think that the government should not make those statements? Would it be tenable not to say anything? Let's take a different example. Let's say a couple of people get killed in an accident involving a public transport company. There will be legal proceedings. But can the government wait until then to come out and say what it knows, what has happened, what actions it has taken? What, we just keep quiet, few people die, and nothing is said, is that the way government can function? And government statements are carefully drafted with advice from the Attorney General to try and not to prejudice ongoing proceedings. And this has been going on since time immemorial. In Lao Sui Song's case, the statements were a little bit more direct than the usual government statements. But I confirm for the record, the courts are the final arbiters. They have to be the final arbiters. 
if the rule of law has got any meaning. Whatever a minister says, whatever a government agency says, ultimately you apply, you look at the clause, and you see whether the statement comes within the clause. This was specifically discussed between us and the Supreme Court, and I put that on record. So it makes great uh, buzz when Mr. Lau says, all the people in the coffee shop, they are all now going to commit contempt. Ordinary people, whereas the government can say what it likes. Untrue and untrue. There's a third point Mr. Lau makes. In the whole process, the courts have become an assistant to the government. Untrue again. The Attorney General, if he believes that a, there is contempt committed, today has to apply to charge the person. That means he says you have committed an offense and he charges you. This law, in fact, allows greater flexibility. What it says is you don't have to charge in every single case. Instead, instead of charging, what you do is you go, you apply to the court, and you try and persuade the court that there is contempt and the person should take it down. Who is the boss? The court is the boss. The court decides whether or not the Attorney General satisfies the court. And if the court disagrees, it tells the Attorney General, go away. Now, second, he gets the order. He serves it on the person who has published. The person who has published is not happy. He can go back to court and say this is not contempt. Who decides? The courts decide. So please, let's not misrepresent the bill. We can have disagreements on points of principle, judgment calls, but let's not go out and say things which are completely inaccurate about what the bill does and doesn't do. <laughs>